Hi, I'm Naomi. I'm Katie. And welcome to Lattice TV Gaming News, bringing you all the game news straight from South Korea. Our first story today is about Lineage 2. After a long period of teasing and trailers, the brand new Org Race has finally made its debut on the Korean service of Lineage 2 Revolution. The brand new playable race has three classes available. Though they have yet to be officially localized in English, the Korean directly translates to Org Raider, Org Monk and Org Shaman. They also wield special weapons for each respective class. Org characters can be created at level 180. There is still no word on when the orgs will be coming to the west, so stay tuned and we'll be sure to let you know of any updates from NC. It isn't just domestic developers giving Korean gamers special content. Bungie announced last week that it would be treating Korean players to its very own exclusive version of Destiny 2, Destiny Guardians. Destiny Guardians has all of the same content as Destiny 2, including its DLC, but it also features a brand new merchant named Yuna. While a new NPC doesn't seem like much to write home about, Yuna actually serves as a merchant to the game's real-world currency store, the Eververse, and has exclusive content like XP boosts, powerful weapons and armor, and cosmetics available for purchase. Korean players will also be hosted on their own server. This PC exclusive will launch on the 5th of September. Pearl Abyss has recently added new stats to their flagship MMORPG, Black Desert Online. The new life skill stat Life Skill Mastery grants you with more rewards from life skills. It is affected by life skill levels as well as magical manos accessories and craft clothes. Having a higher life skill mastery stat also allows you to process more materials at once. Whilst there has yet to be any news on when or whether this stat will drop on western servers, the nitty gritty numbers and increments are available for you to analyze on Inven Global in the meantime. While the Western version of Maple Story 2 is still in its closed beta phase, the Korean server has just received a huge new class advancement update. All 11 playable classes have been accounted for in the update. From level 60, players can choose a specialization path for their character to advance into, which dictates the four new skills they can receive. Each advanced class even has its own new artwork. English speaking fans, be patient. While we still don't know when exactly the game will launch in the West, the producer's blog on the English site did recently reveal a bunch of adorable outfits and cosmetics to tide us over. Another Korean-developed mobile RPG has arrived, as LNK's Redstone 2 was launched today. The action RPG promises to provide an immersive storyline set in the medieval fantasy world of Prandell. Despite being developed in Korea, published by Singaporeans and voiced in Japanese, all of the in-game text is available in English. You can download the game on both Android and iOS devices via Google Play and the App Store. If you missed out on your chance to enter the Ion Design Contest last month, then fear not. There's another chance to flex your Crayolas and get your designs in a Korean MMO. NC has just announced the return of its annual design competition for Blade and Soul. This year, the newly retitled Cosmetic Contest returns with an addition. Instead of just looking for a winning costume, for the first time, they are also looking for a winning weapon illusion design. The two winners will, of course, have their designs featured in-game, and also win a bunch of Hongmin coin and exclusive community events costumes. The Blade and Soul team will pick their finalists and open the grand prize award to a public vote on the official forums from July 31st through August 7th. Submissions can be made up until July 30th. And on a larger scale, ANSI Soft announced last week that it had invested around 20 million US dollars in the visual effects firm Fourth Creative Party. Fourth Creative Party has been a visual effects partner in almost 200 movies, including the critically acclaimed Okja and the multiple award-winning The Handmaiden. NCSoft's founder and CEO Kim Tae-jin said, Fourth Creative Party holds many capabilities, including the country's best visual effects technology. We expect a strategic synergy effect in digital media, such as animation and games. After a lot of drama involving the B-word ramping up in anticipation, the first games of Contenders Korea Season 2 finally kicked off last week. Group A saw defending champions X6 off to a rocky start. After 4-0 stomping WGS in a decisively quick matchup on day 1, they surprisingly went on to lose 3-1 to Metabellum on day 4. Runaway beat Blossom 3-2 and Kongdu Panthera rose to the top of the pack with a solid 3-1 over Metabellum. Trials qualifiers Blossom and WGS currently sit at the bottom of the group after week 1. MVP Space sit at the bottom of group B after losing both of their games. However, things are looking promising for G Super Sun Wave, who, with the help of Edison popping off on Widow, defeated MVP and are now the only Trials qualifiers outside of the relegation spots. 
Last year's finalist, O2 Ardient, won both matchups and sit very comfortably at the top of Group B, with Element Mystic beating 7 2 1. Oh, and it happened. It finally happened. If you're in Seoul and want to catch a game, you can still get tickets online. Runaway matches have a Willy Wonka's golden ticket-esque factor of both value and frequency, so good luck trying to get one of those, but other days are generally easier to acquire seats for. Head over to Interpark to book now. If time is short or time differences are cool, and you can only watch a select handful of games, be sure to catch up on Jisoo Busan Wave vs MVP Space and Element Mystic vs 7 from last week. Looking ahead to week 2, July 14th is shaping up to be the day to watch. Bridesmaids of the competitive scene Runaway will take on the defending champs X6 on July 14th, followed by a rematch between last season's favourites Element Mystic and the team that unexpectedly knocked them out and proceeded to fight all the way to the Season 1 Finals, O2 Ardeant. And in some news outside of the games, Meta Gaming announced that they are releasing Sally and Look B from the Meta Athena roster. After missing out on qualifying for Season 2 by the narrowest of margins, it looks like Meta Athena is already looking to change things up going forward, as are the players. Look B took to Twitter to declare himself a free agent looking for a team, while Sally, who was signed to Meta Athena as a support, returned to both his stream and his DPS roots, showcasing his highly praised and very impressive McCree gameplay. If you have been feeling like you are running low on action figures and novelty pillows, then don't worry. The 16th annual Korea Character Licensing Fair starts tomorrow. The licensing fair features exhibition booths from all of the leading Korean and international characters, including Dragon Village, Angry Birds, and of course, Bororo. The fair runs until Sunday, so you have plenty of time to get yourself down to Coex to check it out. And good news! If you are lucky enough to beat out the fangirls and get tickets to Overwatch World Cup, the Overwatch Korea World Cup Friends Discord has been set up by Korean Overwatch fans looking to help foreigners connect and make various arrangements around the upcoming tournament. So if you are looking for travel advice, a restaurant recommendation, or even someone just to get excited with, be sure to drop in and let them know you are going. And if you're going to any of the mentioned events, let us know on our Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, you know where to find us. And that's it for today. Let's see you guys on next week. Bye bye. Bye bye.